Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has warned that the opposition is planning to repeal laws that for years have been implemented to protect the people. He also said that the right-wing opposition intends to put an end to social missions and programs that for years have benefited the poor and the working class. President Maduro also warned that the opposition that achieved two-thirds majority in the National Assembly in the December 6th elections has planned to privatize companies such as the PDVSA, the state-owned oil company, among others. But Maduro warned he will not allow the opposition to dismantle the social gains of the people. We are facing a large-scale crisis that I have characterized as a counter-revolutionary power crisis that is going to generate a power struggle between two poles, the homeland pole, which wants to continue to build itself up and which is deep, has deep support, and the anti-homeland pole, which is for the first time is ready to be on a war footing with dirty tricks after a circumstantial success. A member of the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet in Chile was placed on house arrest after he phoned in to a local radio program and detailed gruesome executions he took part in as his military service. Boromelo Reyes, 62, phoned into the El Chacotero sentimental radio station on the Carazon radio channel last Wednesday. He explained how they killed the detainees and rendered their remains unidentifiable. Reyes was questioned by Judge Mario Carroza, who late said Reyes' story appeared to be true. And we took several of these guys to the Pampa and we shot them in the head. We blew them up with dynamite and bam, nothing was left. Hundreds and thousands of pilgrims have paid homage to Mexico's most revered Catholic saint, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Annual pilgrimage, one of the world's biggest, as local officials estimate, it drew millions. Most Catholic faithfuls were up for days to come and ask for miracles from the Virgin. Many more asked for protection and welfare, while others confessed their sins. The pilgrims sang and prayed in front of the century's old cloak with the image of the Virgin, who is said to have appeared before indigenous Juan Diego in the 16th century. More than anything, our faith is bigger than what we're carrying. And well, in reality, it's not that heavy. But what's bigger is the love for the Lady of Guadalupe. U.S. officials have reported the seizure of vehicle painted to resemble an official border patrol. The automobile was detained last Thursday, and upon inspection, authorities found 12 undocumented immigrants crammed into the back of the counterfeit vehicle used to smuggle migrants from Mexico into the United States. The vehicle was detected in Laredo, Texas and was stopped because it had a foot bar and a foot bumper, which actually Border Patrol vehicles do not use. Well, people crammed into the back of the counterfeit SUV. U.S. investigators in California are looking into the killing of yet another black man in Linwood. Nicholas Robinson, 28, married and father of three, was shot at about 30 times by Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies. Initially, police said the man pointed a gun at them, but a video provided by our name witness to a local news channel shows Robinson walking away from officers when he was shot. The video shows a sheriff's deputy following Robinson who appears to be walking away. At that point, at least a dozen gunshots are heard and Robinson falls to the ground. Robinson can then be seen crawling away from the gunfire and at least a dozen more shots were heard. Identified him to media as Nicholas Robinson. Uh, deputy involved shooting occurred after uh, the suspect was seen actively shooting. Deputies responded, uh, confronted the suspect. We have witnesses that say that the suspect turned, pointed the gun at the deputies, and the deputy involved shooting occurred. Voters in Central African Republic cast their ballots on Sunday in a constitutional referendum seen as crucial to ending nearly three years of violence defying a call by rebels for the process to be cancelled. The former French colony descended into chaos in early 2013 when mainly Muslim Seleka rebels seized control in a majority Christian nation. Their abuses led to diesel by Christian anti-Balaka militants, sparking interreligious violence that has killed thousands and displaced nearly a million in a de facto partition of the country. The draft constitution is expected to be approved paving the way for December 27 vote to elect a new president and parliament 
and thus restoring democratic rule. We received all the necessary materials for voting yesterday, and it was all monitored by Minusuka agents. This morning we started work very early. We were missing certain things, including the electoral list. It's quite disorganized and there's nothing we could do about it. But we are trying our best and at least we had a good start. China's special envoy to the COP21 climate change summit in Paris, Sen Zaihu, has praised the final draft of a global agreement on the issue. The officials said the accord outlined shared responsibility by both developing and developed countries. The argument also further defines the responsibilities and obligations of developed countries in terms of combating global climate change. Senahu assured his country strongly adheres to the principle of common responsibilities. He explained that under the agreement, developed countries will have to report on emission reductions while offering some flexibility and transitional periods for developing countries. Developed countries should fulfill their promise, which is to provide 100 billion U.S. dollars of financial support annually before 2020. The agreement also insists that they should continue to provide more financial support after 2020. As for developing countries, the agreement encourages them to conduct South-South cooperation based on the principle of volunteerism. <laughs> Millions of French people have voted in the country's regional runoff elections that will show whether the far-right National Front can turn popularity into power. Marine Le Pen's party achieved a breakthrough last week by taking the lead in the first round of the vote. Her party drew strength from the fears of Europe's refugee crisis and the Islamic State militant attacks that killed 130 people in Paris a month ago. The runoffs will be key for all three front-runners of the 2017 presidential elections. Socialist President Francois Holladin, former President Nicolas Sarkozy and Le Pen for the front, winning a region for the first time is key to convince voters it could eventually be trusted to rule the country. I like democracy, and I don't like to see voters be treated as children, be terrorized, such as what several people have tried to do the Prime Minister especially, in profoundly questionable conditions. For the first time ever, women are allowed to vote in Saudi Arabia as well as participate as candidates in the country's regional elections. Initial reports reveal that at least four women won seats to municipal councils. More than 900 women participated as candidates for the first time in history. Over 6,000 men also competed for places on 284 local councils. Votes are still being counted, which means more women could still be announced winners in local councils. Voter turnout was about 25% in elections, hailed as a major step towards gender equality in a nation where women are still banned from driving and must cover themselves when in public. Saudi Arabia is now the world's last country to have given women the right to vote.